the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our celebration of the third Sunday of Easter. We welcome the parishioners of St. James and St. Rita and all others who have joined us as we continue to celebrate with joy our risen Lord, who will bring us out of darkness and into light. For the times that we have chosen darkness over light, we ask his pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man condemned, commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my flesh has been glad and my tongue has exulted. 
My flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld. Nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. Listen, since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, and poured him forth as you see and hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially, according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourn, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but 
with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels announced he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised, has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> post-resurrection gospel is probably my personal favorite, for it underscores and underlines the importance of the presence of Christ in our lives. Certainly, the importance and the reality of the Eucharist 
that Christ becomes fully present to us in that blessing, in that breaking, and in that distribution. It is Christ himself that we receive. And yet, in a time when most of us are unable to receive that beautiful gift physically, we turn to this gospel to get a larger understanding of how the presence of Christ comes to us constantly and in every way. The two disciples are depressed. They're downcast, as the gospel says, because they've seen the one that they have followed crucified and laid in a tomb. And they're caught in their grief and their anxiety. They're caught in their own darkness. And because of this, they are unable to see that it is Christ who walks with them. We sometimes can fall into that same trap. That we get so focused on what's wrong, and what's bad, on what we are afraid of, on what brings anxiety, that we don't notice that Christ is walking with us. Every step of the way, of every journey, but when they get together and they gather around the table and he takes the bread, their eyes are open. A very simple and human gesture, gathering for a meal, sharing of bread, in that very simple and human activity, God makes himself present to us. And in that very simple and human activity Christ has chosen to remain with us. Certainly these two disciples may have been at the Last Supper just a few nights before when they witnessed Jesus taking the bread and breaking it, instituting for us one powerful way that his presence remains. But that presence goes beyond. That presence is all-inclusive. As the disciples say, were not our hearts burning within us when he opened the scriptures to us? Whenever we open the word of God and we stand on that word, Christ is present. When we gather in his name, two or three, and as we gather in unity, even virtually, Christ is present. Christ comes to us in so many ways that we very often don't notice because we're always wanting to focus on the miraculous and the dramatic. But how is Christ coming to us in this moment amidst a crisis, amidst sickness, amidst death and uncertainty? He walks with us. And if we but open our eyes in our own simple and human activities, we will recognize him. Not only in the breaking of the bread, but in the opening of our own hearts to his grace and to his love and to his mercy. As we move forward through and we pray out of our current crisis, may we recognize him and know that he is walking with us every step. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now come before our loving and always present God with our prayers of petition. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely, the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, especially those affected by COVID-19, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to COVID-19, for the protection of all human life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Buck Williams, Jerry Boudreaux, all who have died, and for the consolation of their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up lift to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. 
but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. supper was ended. He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ Oh, 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the midst of a lot of bad news, we have received good news earlier this week that Pope Francis has appointed a new bishop for the Diocese of Alexandria. Bishop-elect Robert Marshall from the Diocese of Memphis. We obviously have no idea when uh, Bishop Marshall will be ordained and installed as our bishop. Uh, that's on hold like everything else. But as soon as that date is set, uh, we look forward to celebrating with great joy as we welcome him as our new shepherd. I had erroneously stated uh, that May 1st would be the day that we would make announcements of pastoral changes and assignments in the diocese. That is the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. However, we will not be making announcements until the weekend, uh, May 2nd and 3rd. And so to uh, enable this, uh, we will have a Mass next Saturday at 4 p.m., here live stream uh, to make those announcements. We will still offer a live streamed Mass uh, on Friday, May 1st, the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. This is an opportunity for us to pray for all of those who may have lost jobs, those who are otherwise unemployed, those who work on the front lines during this COVID crisis of medical professionals and mental health professionals, the uh, police and firemen and all first responders, all who come out of themselves day in and day out and put themselves at risk for the safety and the well-being of others. So we will offer that mass for workers, uh, both those who are unemployed and those who are working very, very hard at this time. Again, that's Friday. May 1st uh, at 10 a.m. We will live stream that Mass. On behalf of myself, Father Peter Falk, we thank you for joining us. We love you. We miss you. We look forward to the day when we will celebrate again together fully. We do expect some uh, news to be coming out and some guidance and some further information this week. Uh, please pay close attention. Uh, when we are able to return to public liturgy, it's uh, very, very likely and probable that it will be with restrictions. So uh, please pay attention and, and work with us and, and be patient with us. Uh, we, we want to come back, but we don't want to bring COVID back. We want it to go away, and we must be responsible. Uh, in, in, in helping that to happen. So, again, I appreciate your cooperation and I uh, appreciate your patience uh, as well. Be safe, be smart, faith, not fear. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.